Thank you so much. Thank you for the opportunity to speak. My name is Otto Bong. I'm Peter. I'm the head of product in the African blockchain for developers. Um, that's what we are known um, this publicly, but you know, the uh, underlying company behind what we will do is um, called ABCD um, Technologies, which is incorporated here in Nigeria. And our uh, work is mostly to, you know, work with connecting developers on the continent and also seeing how we can, um, you know, source this talent to develop products. Uh, on one end, we have been building products that really focused on um, the blockchain ecosystem. But on the other end, too, you know, we, we've also seen a huge gap in other um, areas of the um, software and IT economy. And we've also been building um, resource, human resource, to also see how we can also measure, um, cover that gap and then bring people together to solve problems especially about discovering talent um the african blockchain center for uh developers is very much interested in communities people building people upskilling people and that really defines a lot of what we do so in for the talk today which is um um centered around this economy of the future which we call web3 is next africa and i'll be focusing particularly on closing the development gaps on the african continent with blockchain technology while um there's one end of hype you know where people tend to like you know talk about different things you know um web3 is this nft is this tokenomics is this and then you know there's just so much conversation everybody's like trying to um maybe Due, due to the fear of missing out everybody saying okay maybe the metaverse where is this because there's actually this fear that yes on one end what if this technology actually fails on the other end what if everything works out and then you're left behind in the past so people would actually want to become stakeholders in this economy of the future and that makes so much sense but to be realistic is this really a technology that has potentials of transforming communities and changing the future as someone who is building on the continent i can tell you for free that blockchain technology holds so much potential and, and i'm not going to talk based on the media hype we see but i'm going to talk based on from the standpoint of someone who's building on the continent and who's who's been part of communities at some point i was um google developers um student lead at some point and then also the uh, president of blacks in technology um here in nigeria of course if you know bit bit is very active in the um in some black um tech communities so here i've seen the power of the technology in bridging um some gaps and that's um what i mostly want to you know um talk about and that's what the talk today is focused on um next africa when we say next africa what do we mean or what do i mean when i mean next uh, when, when i say next africa what I'm um, to trying to imply is where we want to see Africa in the future. There was a very popular um, article that was posted or published some years back, and it, it was about Africa rising. So it really um, pushed a lot of persons to become interested in what does this really mean, African rising? Like, what does it really mean? Does it mean like there's bigger opportunities down on the continent? But we've seen so far, for like um, countries like Nigeria and Kenya, we've seen... Um, massive improvement in the tech ecosystem with people building the launch of fintech companies and as at um october 2022 fintech companies here on the, in um in africa were valued at almost four billion dollars some some um some statistics put it between two and four billion dollars so we can see that there's a fast growing ecosystem not just for fintech or other um technologies but also especially for blockchain and how is blockchain technology or um or or its accompanying technologies under the web3 economy which which is of course you 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 would um talk about nft you talk about um the token economy you also talk about the metaverse how is how is all this um capable of actually closing the development gap in in africa one of it is that for most developed economies like the united states and most part of the world of europe and most of the western world one of the issues is that they already have systems that are working so it becomes very difficult to replace some of these working systems you know with new nascent technologies like blockchain and the rest but in africa where a lot of um things are really uh, uh are not really working properly we've seen that there's so much potential to actually leapfrog where because we might not have had two three four but we're able to jump from zero to five and and miss the gaps in between in our development because in 
places where certain technologies or where certain developments were not previously created it's easier for those kind of economies to jump from zero to five because they will always jump to where the world is currently and that's what we're seeing in africa the simplicity and ease of implementing certain technologies have made it easier and a place to, for people to want to build or launch some some sort of product for instance, you want to launch in the United States, for instance, there's going to be so much of processes to go through. And while that is good because of they have massive and um, there's huge uh, bureaucracy on one end, but also there are also systems that are working, which are trying to convince people to replace. But in Africa, where most systems are not working, it becomes easier for them to, you know, hop on to the next big thing. So um, what are the gaps existing on the African continent? F for one, Africa is one of the biggest deposits of raw materials globally and being one of the biggest deposits of raw materials globally beyond crude oil we're talking of lithium which um this in past most of our the teslas you drive to um cocoa to um a lot of products both mineral resources and also natural resources so it's 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 a huge in fact 50 percent of the world's gold come from africa diamond you find them in africa cobalt tin name a few literally any mineral product you can think of 80 percent of most of the world's reserves of um of uh, mineral resources a lot of it at least you find major distributions in africa at least if it's not in major proportions at least you find 30 percent of it deposits somewhere on the continent of africa and while that's huge we still find out that a lot of the people on the continent are living in abject poverty and this is not because um these mineral resources are not um producing wealth but because the wealth economy is not um, being circulated. So you have a few persons, especially when it comes to leadership and politics, who are um, who are not very transparent enough, and then they are making um, the distribution of wealth one-sided, or, or I'll just maybe lopsided, where it's just a thing of some people. So wealth is being distributed, but then it's not really going around. Just some persons that are actually benefiting from the um, from the benefits of democracy or from the resource that is supposed to be shared around. But one of the things that the blockchain technology holds in this kind of um, spaces, especially in Africa, is transparency. Transparency in that we can actually build um, ecosystems, that we can build products, decentralized applications, powered by the blockchain technology, that, that every point across the distribution chain, we can actually see how resources are being transmitted. We can see costs and we can understand how they are being distributed. And yes that holds so much benefit because that is one of the um, places that i feel um the blockchain technology has, is still yet to be utilized especially on the continent where you have companies like um some chinese companies come to i think what are they in gabon i, I don't know if it's uh, in gabon or in the congo uh, this in drc where they come there they mine lithium and then they pay these people peanuts but they sell it in the international market for thousands of dollars in fact millions of dollars but the people from which the way these resources are being mined are not really getting the benefit of it and that's just one part as at um 2021 a lot of um i i just wanted to bring out something as at um 2021 um a lot of uh persons contrary to what people think you know we are beginning to um you know really understand what's happening in the ecosystem as as at, as as we speak about 22 million persons in nigeria alone are um using uh crypto currencies or at least are aware of cryptocurrencies to a large extent and i was speaking to some persons some time back and then i i i remember someone telling me it was like that the amount of people who have become wealthy from the um crypto economy in nigeria alone is 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 literally humongous i think if you um are here you would understand that what i'm saying it's really it literally humongous it's really difficult to really explain the magnitude of people who have been able to um, capture wealth from what's happening in, in the ecosystem because never before in the african um, um ecosystem have we seen wealth being decentralized at peak 
a lot of persons are becoming used to receiving cryptocurrencies getting paid in cryptocurrencies and the ease of transaction i remember sometime last year i had i was doing a project with um an organization in estonia and i had so much issue issues with getting paid via paper and that's because like a country like nigeria is actually blacklisted on paper and that's what's happening most of these centralized ecosystems so maybe even when you get paid sometimes sometimes your 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 um, account could just get blocked because nigeria is not listed so if you try to use, use a different country to find anything fishy you could lose your funds that's on one end on the other end also is even when you try to use some um some um platforms that promise you cross-border transactions you find out that in transit most of those transactions or most of what they're trying to send um they delay or the fees are so high that when it reaches the person it doesn't really have as much value as it should at the beginning so most of these are the kind of issues that um, blockchain technology is beginning to solve because at this point you can pay somebody across borders with at, at almost zero cost so you you can use 50 usdt 100 usdt 300 usdt and that's part of what is also being solved the bigger part of it is about the developer economy which is community that it is solving because right now we are seeing developers you know we're seeing people coming together we're seeing um builders who are very interested in um um um, um learning coming together to collaborate to build products and they are coming to discover that especially with open source there's so much that they could solve using blockchain technology from DeFi products to um, health related products to staking to lending um, these services. In fact, I even have um, this an organization that is partnering with our um, one of our partner companies, Proof, Proof of Africa. They are building uh, a platform, I think, um, somewhere in, I think, Zim, Zimbabwe where they are using nfts to tokenize landed properties to allow people to use the nfts on chain to actually get um get loans so for instance um you want to get loans um but most of these loans have to be collateralized so at least you need to have a kind of a, a a credit score and so these persons are on bank they don't have data but if you can tokenize your land to and have an nft on chain that represents the real life value you can actually take this and stick it on some protocols get loans and then when you pay back you get back your nft and your land is secure so these are the kind of things that's being built in the ecosystem and i think um the parallel between people willing to build product and develop on the continent and people um, who are also becoming more interested to learn is forming a community of builders forming a community of learners and educators and at the same time also bringing industry into the mix so um in nigeria for instance nigeria is the first um country on on the african continent that embraced them um, central bank digital currencies while it's not um, fully being um, absorbed because people are not really be, um, using it, not because they won't want to use it, but then there are still a lot of integrations to be um, to be built around it. Um, sometime last month, the Nigerian government, in collaboration with other people, you know, had had an event, and then an entire day was given to blockchain technology. So there's so much that the blockchain technology could do, and these are just the ways, and it is really, really bridging gap gaps to um, a shared economy where there's transparency, accountability, and people are also, um, and and then it is also building a community of builders where persons are, are interested in learning. Um, you know, and also building products. So you see people who want to build on the um, Cardano chain. You see people who want to build on the um, on the Ethereum chain and all that. Like the the level playing ground is no more thing about you know huge software companies. It's about people who are interested in solving problems. And then once they are interested in solving these problems, they are sure that yes, there's going to be reward systems in place to actually you know um, help them out. Most people here might not be um, paid so much, but then they've also understood that in a decentralized ecosystem, if you're able to create value, you'll be rewarded. It could be token-based rewards. It could be um, rewards based on NFTs from different projects. So people here are beginning to become more engaged in the space. I, I was speaking to a friend and then we're like, um, the first major amount of money um, she was able to earn was just by creating content on a on on a uh, on a decentralized autonomous organization. All she had to do was create content, submit them, and get paid. So we are seeing an ecosystem where people are becoming increasingly enriched, and also there's bigger communities, communities built around projects, communities built around blockchains, communities built around education, learners. We have communities, and that's what we're also doing at ABC. You know, sponsoring this kind of outreaches, and there's also a product that we are currently building, which is called Open Build. 
where we are um, bridging that gap between people who are learning and people who are also busy and then incentivizing the entire ecosystem in a way that you are rewarded for the um, for the um, contributions you're making in the ecosystem. So, yes, while there's a long way to go, um, there are a lot of gaps on the continent, and I think blockchain technology is is a huge fit because it's not just controlled by a single entity but then it's community led thank you so much for listening and i, I look forward to um this thing connecting with you linkedin you can always reach me at utobong peter and uh, there's so much i would have loved to talk about but that's how short the talk is and there's bigger opportunities and we are calling for builders who are interested in finding solutions on the african continent and looking at ways through which decentralized technologies could actually bridge this gap the biggest thing is about incentivizing communities and, and interactions that um, can come out of there and how we can also identify com um, builders from these initiatives so thank you very much and um hopefully we we'll see the next Africa, the Africa that we dream, Africa that is developed and Africa where people are empowered and communities are incentivized to become builders. Thank you.